Hi, Martin here, and it is, what is it, late October, anyway, almost November, <laughs> and I'm just out on my uh, property here. I own a little bush lot surrounded by Crown Land, and I'm doing some work on it today, uh, and I thought I would take a coffee break and uh, do a response video uh, that I owe. Uh, Wade, over at Woods Walker 1965, tagged me in a video last year, and I'm only now getting around to it. My apologies, Wade. Um, and uh, he tagged me to answer a question. The question is, what are my five favorite bushcraft items? And so that's what I'm going to do uh, now is tell you what my five favorite bushcraft items uh, are. Uh, but I don't just want to, you know, show what they are. Of course, I want to explain why I make the gear choices that I do. Um, so here they are, um, uh, more or less in order. Uh, my Mora knife, my Mora Robust. Uh, the Tool Logic SL3 folding knife, uh, emergency whistle, and uh, a ferro rod included in it. That's the second item. Third would be another cutting tool. This is the Silky Saw. This is the uh, 240 or 220 millimeter one. Uh, this sheath uh, doesn't come with it. I, I cobbled this together myself. Um, and uh, the fourth thing would be my tarp. This is an 8x10 Sil Nylon tarp. It's the uh, Sil Tarp 2. It was originally made by Integral Designs, but uh, a company now makes um, this product. And it, it's, I believe it's an English company called Rab that makes these now. Uh, so that would be my fourth item. And my last item is my 1.8 liter Moore's Bush Pot. So those are my five items, and let me explain why I chose these items. Um, so the Mora knife. The reason I like the Mora knife uh, is because it is cheap, it's durable, it's good quality steel, um, it um, is effectively uh, indestructible. Um, that is, the scales are not uh, anything that requires any maintenance or care. They're going to get banged up or, or scratched or anything like that. It's got a kind of rubberized handle, really, really excellent grip. Um, it's not especially heavy. Um, uh, it is not a full tang knife, I should mention, uh, but I baton with it all the time. It's got a three-quarter length tang. It's not the little rat tail. It's a, a longer one on the Robust. This one is made of a, a thicker steel than that you would find in the, the Companion. Um, and, um, I mean, if you take a look at my knives, you'll see that I, I beat the crap out of them. I've had this one for about, oh, I don't know how long now, about six years. I won it in a giveaway contest, um, along with the, the Moore's Bush Pot, as a matter of fact, all in one contest. Um, so I'm very, very fond of it. It sort of has a sentimental value. Um, I didn't just go into the store and bought it. I feel like I somehow did something to, to earn this in a giveaway contest. Um, so I love this knife because um, it doesn't require a lot of fuss or maintenance. I don't have to worry about it. I'm not terrified that, um, that I will lose it and I've lost a, a very costly investment. Um, and it has a Scandi grind, which is just a, a flat, straight uh, grind. Um, so it's very, very easy to sharpen in the field. Uh, if it had a, a, a concave or convex uh, uh, portion at any point, that would be harder to, uh, to, uh, to sharpen when I'm out in the bush. Um, so I really like it for that reason. Another reason is the sheath. The sheath is just this cheap piece of plastic, but it is blessedly light. Uh, it's very, very effective. The knife, once inside, doesn't doesn't fall off. It has a drainage hole. Um, it uh, um, it's the kind of sheath that allows you to wear a, a lanyard, and so you can wear it as a neck knife, as I explained in a previous video, and why I like to wear it as a neck knife. Um, but of course, it can be sheathed on your belt. There's a clip to put on your belt if you prefer it that way. Um, yeah, so I like this knife because it is um, extremely practical, extremely functional. It does everything that I, I need it to do at low cost, and I don't have to worry about it. I've been using more knives for a number of years. I have a, a number of others. Um, here's another one that I have. Uh, this is more, uh, it's not quite the Companion. It's a slightly uh, different model. This one's made in stainless steel. Um, there's one thing I do like about this one uh, better than this one, though, and that's the color. I, I like my gear to be sort of bright and garishly colored. My, my tarp is bright yellow and... Um, uh, my backpack is uh, orange. Uh, I, I like bright, garish colors. It's easy to find things. When I made a sheath for my saw, I made it out of a red Cordura fabric that I found. 
Um, so I really like having gear that's uh, highly visible. So if they could make one change to this knife, it's, it would be make it in Hunter Orange or Blaze Orange. I would prefer that. Uh, so I have a, the, the stainless steel one that I bought years ago. I have another one which I also bought in Blaze Orange. This one's uh, actually my wife's knife. This is the fire knife. This is the one um, that uh, is, again, um, stainless steel. Um, it's got a th uh, thinner profile, just like this one does, unlike the Robust, which is a thicker blade. But this one is a little special in that it has a little ferro rod, a little light my fire ferro rod integrated into the hilt. Um, so I really like these knives. Um, I never have to worry about them, uh, losing them, because they are so affordable. And I've never broken one, never never broken the, um, the, the tip, never had one um, crack or anything like that. Uh, nothing about them seems to fail. So um, I'm uh, committed to uh, using more knives indefinitely. Uh, all right. That's item number one. Number two um, is this. Uh, this I featured also in a, a previous video on my ditch kit. This is not just part of my, my ditch kit. This is part of my EDC. I wear it on my belt everywhere, even in the city, going about my business every day. This goes with me. So it's just a, a folding lock liner. It's called the Tool Logic uh, SL3. It has a, about a, a three inch blade. The overall length is um, seven inches. It has some serrations on it. So it's great if you need to cut fabric or rope or something like that. Um, it has an integrated whistle. Uh, and there is a ferro rod in the spine over here. Uh, it started off much longer, but I've worn it right down over the years. And that little compartment that it uh, fits into is actually waterproof. So you can put um, some dry tinder, char cloth, anything in there because there's a little rubber gasket here. So I love this. I, I have a safety whistle, I have a combustion device, and I have a cutting tool uh, in a lightweight um, device that has a pocket clip and a little lanyard ring. So it's easy to keep it on a lanyard in my pocket all the time. So this goes with me everywhere, not just on um, camping trips or day trips in the bush, it, you know, in the city all the time, that's on me. Uh, so the third thing is uh, the cutting tool. This is the Silky Gomboy. Um, and uh, I've tried all kinds of other saws, uh, you know, takedown saws, you know, buck saw designs and, and stuff like that. And uh, I find even in winter camping, where you're cutting bigger pieces of wood and a lot more of it, this does the trick. Um, a longer one, uh, which they sell, might be better in some circumstances. For instance, trail clearing or something like that. But I really love these saws. Uh, there are other... Um, Folding saws, Baco makes a, the Laplander makes a, that's a, a really good uh, saw. But I like this one better for a number of reasons. Um, uh, and that is the blade itself. Um, uh, the blade is um, unusual. It's very, very thin. Now, the fact that it's thin means that it's flexible. Um, uh, so you've got to be careful not to break it. Um, but the reason it's thin is so that the cut that it makes is thin. The less material that it removes uh, in terms of width, the easier it is for it to cut down, to knife into the wood. And the teeth are all back facing. So this is a pull saw. It cuts, or that is it clears and removes material on the pull. Nothing happens on the push. So you don't push down into the wood as you're pushing. You just push gently down on the wood as you're pulling. And that, these backward facing teeth um, cut down, they create the kerf, um, and uh, they, they clear out that, that, that kerf as well. Um, uh, this saw also doesn't bind the way other folding saws have a tendency to do, and the way um, even uh, ordinary buck saws tend to do. And that's because they designed it, and this is part of the, the, its thinness, they designed it so that the spine is narrower than the teeth. The teeth are wider. This part of the blade here the business end, is that that is a thicker piece of metal than the spine. Um, and so as it's, it's, it's going deeper and deeper into the wood, there is clearance, there is um, a gap between this, the, uh, the spine here and the wood that it's cutting into. And so it's less likely to bind. Even with wet green woods, sappy, resinous woods, this saw doesn't bind very much. It's, it's terrific for that reason. Um, another reason I prefer this kind of saw um, uh, in general, uh, folding saws over takedown saws, is that you can cut any size piece of wood. When you have a takedown saw, you can only go down so far because the spine, that, that 
the, the back frame of, of a takedown saw. It's, it's shaped like a rectangle. You've got a blade here, and then you've got a, a handle, and then you've got a back, and then you've got a, a piece of uh, metal or wood that comes down on this side. That determines how thick a piece of wood you can cut. But with one of these, you can cut through a piece of wood that's as, um, as thick as you like. It, it really, the only um, determinant is how long the blade is. And they sell some that are very, very long, like two and a half, maybe three feet long, really, really long ones for cutting really big logs. Uh, but this has served me well, uh, summer camping and winter camping. Um, I've had this for about three years. I've used it very, very heavily. It is only now starting to show signs of wear. Um, so I'm gonna have to replace the, the blade. They do sell replacement blades. Um, and that's another reason I like this. This saw, once it's folded down and put in its sheath or not, um, is very, very small. I mean, it's a fraction of the size of any takedown saw, and it's lighter than any takedown saw that I know of, although I mean, the handle is actually quite heavy and quite, quite robust, so uh, they could make it lighter if they wanted to, um, but I don't think they see fit to, to do it. I, it's not really marketed for, um, for backcountry campers it's, and backpackers. It's actually made for, um, for arborists. It's an arborist tool. Um, uh, so it's very, very uh, sturdy handle. It's not going to break or anything like that. But if the blade does uh, break, and it can because it's flexible, if you push down too hard on the, on the, on the push, it could kink or break, um, replacement blades are available. And that's another reason why I like it over a takedown saw. It's so small and so light that I can bring this into the bush with multiple uh, replacement blades so that if I do break one, no big deal. I have one with me. Um, and if you're going to be on an extended trip, it's a good idea to bring an extra saw blade anyway. Um, so um, I would have an extra saw blade even if I had a takedown saw on an extended trip. So that's one of the reasons, that, that's one of many reasons I, I, I like this saw. Um, if there are things that they could do to improve it, as I mentioned, they could make it lighter. The handle is extremely heavy. Sorry about the traffic noise. I'm, uh, I'm parked uh, very close to the highway here. Um, uh, they, they could make the handle an awful lot lighter. They could make a sheath for it. That would be uh, terrific, but they don't. Uh, so you'll have to fashion something yourself. Uh, it has a lanyard hole here. I like to put something orange on it so I can, uh, or and this is orange paracord. Um, I like orange so that I don't lose track of it. And um, so I can hang it on a tree or something like that. And if I drop it, I can easily find it um, even in, in darkness with the, the orange lanyard. So um, this has been a terrific saw. I like it so much that I bought another one. I bought the Pocket um, Boy. It's called a Pocket Boy. Uh, much shorter, much lighter. Uh, fits in a pocket. Uh, fits in a, 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 a your haversack or you know whatever it is uh, that you want to bring. And uh, I haven't even used this yet, uh, but I have a feeling that this is going to make its way into my winter ditch kit because it would be really good to have a saw. And a ditch kit is something you have to carry with you. That other saw is rather this saw here is a little bit cumbersome to carry on your person all the time, whereas this could easily fit into a little sheath. Uh, on your belt or into a deep pocket or into a fanny pack or whatever it is um, that you're using for your ditch kit. Um, so I got a second one of these. And if I ever go on a, a really long backcountry trip and I know I'm going to do some trail clearing, I'll get myself one of the longer models. So silky saws, love them. Um, so that's three. Four, the tarp. Um, I'm going to show you some um, some pictures and footage of this tarp when uh, it's, uh, it's uh, strung and deployed. But this is the eight foot by 10 foot Siltarp II by Rab. Uh, when I bought it, it was made by Integral Designs. It's very, very, very slippery, uh, light, perfectly waterproof sill nylon. It's made out of ripstop. Um, I love this tarp. It is smaller than an algae bottle. Um, it, uh, it, it's, it's incredibly light. It has tons of guy out points. Uh, on it, um, you'll be able to see that when it once it's uh, strung up in the other pictures and videos. Um, it has uh, held up in torrential downpours and huge gusting winds. Um, it's never failed me. Nothing has ever torn out. It doesn't have grommets. It has web loops um, all around it, uh, including one in the middle, so that you can um, lift it from the center. Um, so it's terrific tarp. Uh, offers perfect coverage for two adults and a dog and a fireplace or a fire pit. Um, in fact, uh, my wife and I recently camped under this um, uh, on an 11-day camping trip. Uh, we were pinned down in some heavy rains for about oh, the better part of four or five days. Uh, in fact, we were windbound. 
and uh, we had horizontal rain. We set this up in a kind of lean-to style, it kept us both perfectly dry and all of our gear. There was room for uh, another dog, arguably another adult, although that would have been uh, tight, but there was a fire ring uh, right there uh, at the edge of the tarp. So plenty of room to cook, to lounge around in. So lots of coverage. Are we having fun yet? So much fun. <laughs> Crazy. Oh. Woo, buddy. <laughs> if, uh, if they could improve this in one way, I would say make it square, make it 10 by 10 or 8 by 8 if you want smaller. 10 by 10 I think would be ideal. And the reason I say it would be better if it would be square is uh, there are more configurations, more ways that you can rig a, a tarp when it's square than it's uh, rectangular. Um, the two ways that I, I, I use this tarp principally are as uh, a lean-to shelter, so like a, an angled wind wall and then an angled sloping roof overhead, um, or just um, like, uh, like an A-frame, um, kind of a shallow A-frame with one corner raised on one side and lowered on the other side so that water will drain off of it. Uh, and um, yeah, I love this tarp. I've had this tarp, how about long have I had this tarp? seven years, eight years, I don't know, long time, use it all the time, always comes with me on my, um, on my camping trips and most of my day outings. Um, the only time I uh, don't bring this is if I'm going on a short outing and then I bring another RAB product with me. Um, I featured this one in my ditch kit also. I was looking for my ditch kit. It is exactly where it ought to be, right on me. So here's my fanny pack, which is my ditch kit. And in here, I carry all this stuff that you're seeing me pull out. <laughs> it's featured in another video on my ditch kit. Um, the Rab Sill Nylon Poncho. So this is a tarp and a poncho. You can wear it as a poncho, or you can stretch it out like a tarp, which, is, which will give um, actually very good coverage for one person and fairly tight coverage for two people in a pinch. Um, and again, it's made out of the same kind of material, um, uh, slightly uh, lighter uh, weave, but again, ripstop nylon, um, uh, silicon coated and impregnated, lots of, of web loops uh, to guide out uh, securely um, and packs down really, really small, really, really light, quite a bit smaller and lighter than the other one. And somewhat more versatile because you can wear it as a poncho, so you don't have to bring rain gear and a tarp, you can just bring this and you're golden. Okay, so that's the fourth, or rather, this is the fourth item. This is its little brother. And uh, the fifth item is my Moore's pot. Uh, I've used all kinds of camping cookware uh, over the years and cook sets. And cook sets, cooking stoves that come with uh, pots and pans, things like the, the Trangia set. Uh, but the most useful single uh, cooking instrument I have ever used is this. This is the 1.8 liter Moore's Bush Pot. It's made by Four Dog Stoves uh, in the US. Um, it's not cheap. Um, when you live in Canada, you have to pay for shipping and handling and, and, and so forth. <clears throat> so it's not especially cheap. I wish there was a, a Canadian distributor of these. I'm not aware of one, uh, but it's a terrific pot. Um, first of all, it's 1.8 liters, which is plenty for two people on a, on a camping trip. Um, I take it with me sometimes on solo trips. Um, it's uh, made out of a nice um, uh, thick steel. Uh, it's uh, not steel. There's a steel, there's a steel version and an anodized, uh, anodized uh, aluminum model. This is the anodized aluminum, so it's coated inside. Um, so it's got a nice non-stick coating on the inside. Um, uh, it has a bale handle, as you can see, which is terrific. Uh, and the bale handle stays up in this position, in this position, in this position, or all the way down here, out of the way. Um, so it's uh, really quite handy uh, when you want to cook over a campfire. 
uh, as you saw me doing here. It has a bit of a spout right here. It's uh, kind of crimped right here so that you can do a, an easy pour. And it has these butterfly handles which fold back this way. So it's black on the inside. Actually, no, it was silver on the inside. It's black on the inside. It had a silver lid. As you can see, I've used this for years. Um, I've used this, well, as long as I've had that uh, Mora knife, because I won them together in a, in a giveaway contest, as I said. So about six years I've been using this on virtually every trip. Absolutely love this thing. Um, the only way that they could improve upon this, I would say, is if they made it out of titanium. Uh, I should say something about the lid. The lid is a much lighter um, uh, metal. It's, uh, it's, it's aluminum also. It has a little ring here, a little D-ring, and uh, the D-ring is slightly bent so that you can get a twig underneath it and lift it up easily off of the pot, um, which is a nice little feature. And when you fold it down this way, it, it conforms to the, um, the, uh, the contours of the, of the lid. Um, so yeah, very well thought out uh, product, very, very durable. I, I don't know how many campfires it's been over, but the metal's not thinning. As you see, um, I mean, my, my pot is just fully encrusted with, with soot and resin and stuff like that. I don't worry about that. It just helps it heat up faster if it's black, and so I don't, I don't scour or soap or, or clean my pots and get them silvery and reflective. I, I like them black. This started off, the top of this started off all silvery, uh, but it's blackened uh, from being in, uh, over so many fires. Um, as I said, the only way I think they could make this better is if they made a lighter version, if they made a titanium version. Um, okay, that's it. Those are my gear choices. Those are my five favorite bushcraft items. I take them out uh, with me on almost every single outing. They certainly come with me on every camping trip uh, and very often on just little, little day trips or afternoon trips uh, like this. I would have brought this um, uh, today, even if I wasn't making this video, I would have had this with me uh, in my backpack or <clears throat> in my haversack. So the three people that I'm tagging, uh, I, it so happens I know them all through the same place, the, uh, the same place online. Um, uh, a few weeks ago, I uh, participated in a live stream uh, on a channel called Canoe Hound Adventures uh, that is owned by Dennis. Uh, Dennis is a YouTuber. Uh, he's a canoeist. He's a backcountry camper. He's uh, a bushcraft enthusiast. Um, and he has a channel uh, that's much like my own. Uh, he makes um, videos um, where he talks about tips and tricks and sh um, practices bushcraft skills, um, uh, does trip logs, gear reviews, you know, very much the kind of stuff that, that I do here. Uh, but in addition, he does live streams. Uh, that is every Tuesday evening um, around 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, he goes online and he ha uh, hosts a live stream uh, where he discusses um, some topic that's of interest to people in the outdoor uh, backpacking, camping, canoeing, bushcraft community. Um, and um, <clears throat> he invites a peop uh, people on um, and you can participate in the live chat and very often you can just join in the conversation. And that's how I met uh, uh, Dennis and I thought, wow, this live streaming um, on the subject of camping and bushcraft is a great idea. So I've been a regular a um, uh, viewer of that live stream ever since I discovered it just a few weeks ago. In fact, I had the honor of, of being interviewed uh, by Dennis uh, just last week. So um, I commend his channel uh, to you. And Dennis, if you're watching this, um, you're tagged. I want to know what your five favorite bushcraft items are, and I would like you to tell me why, if you could. Um, the, uh, the second person uh, is another person that I met through Canoe Hound Adventures live stream, and that is Sty North. Now, Sty North's been around uh, for a long time. I had heard the name, but I had never actually come across his channel. Uh, Sty is uh, an interesting fellow. He's a, an older gentleman, um, and he has years and years of camping and canoeing and bushcraft experience. He was a bushcraft instructor. He has a channel with some 400 videos, and that man is what we call in French a raconteur. He is a storyteller. Uh, he has all kinds of stories to tell. Um, and um, he has all kinds of wisdom to share. So check out his channel, uh, Sty North. If you have not already been tagged, um, and I looked on your channel, but I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't see in all those 400 videos if you had actually uh, answered this tag. But if you have been tagged for this, you can uh, disregard this. But if not, I would be very interested in uh, hearing what your five favorite bushcraft items are. And if you could say why, I would appreciate that as well. 
Uh, and lastly is um, a, a YouTuber. Um, he's fairly uh, new. He, I, I think he's been making videos for about a year. At, it's another channel in a similar vein to my own. Um, but he, his channel favors more trip logs. Uh, him and, and himself going out uh, very often on solo trips with his dog. He does a lot of canoe tripping. He's from the U.S. He does canoe trips in Algonquin Park and um, uh, uh, south of the border as well. Uh, he's also a bushcraft en enthusiast, and I really like the quality of his videos. Um, it's just him uh, going out, doing his trips, showing what he's doing, mistakes and all, and I like that in, in a channel. And so that YouTuber is Dan Schultz Outdoors. So Dan, if you're watching this, um, please, I'd like to know what your five favorite bushcraft items are and why. Okay, that's the end of the video. Uh, just one last caveat. If I've tagged you and you're not interested in doing a tag um, video response, obviously you're under no obligation to do so. Uh, it's a labor of love. Um, I hope you'll do it, but if not, no hard feelings. Um, but I am genuinely cu curious uh, as to what your five favorite bushcraft items are. So thank you in advance uh, for any response videos that you do. And thank you, Wade, over at Woods Walker 1965. Thank you for your patience. I told you I'd get it done. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.